Hey, what's up? Nyla here. And that's not my intro. Oops, I am dumb. Hey, what's up, people on the internet out there? Nyla here, and I am back with my December bullet journal spreads. So I know everyone's probably wondering where I was for November and why I didn't upload. So let me explain before I get fully into my December bullet journal spreads. So at the end of October, I ended up having this really, really bad creative block and I couldn't come up with a theme for November that I wanted to record. I ended up not recording anything because I didn't even make my November spreads until November had already started. At that point, I just needed something that was functional because school was really hectic and I needed to write down my things to do. So I just took a couple of markers that I thought was fall themed and fit with November and I just started doodling and I came up with something that worked for me. Again, unfortunately, I didn't record it. And honestly, it was a nice break because I got to focus on making sure that this was just for me and it actually helped me throughout my midterms and all the stress that I was going through in that moment. So I really hope you don't mind that I didn't upload in November, but at least I have many things coming up and I'm very excited for them, like my 2021 plan with me and also my January plan with me. So coming back to my December plan with me, this is a long video and I apologize for that, but at the same time I don't because I gotta include a bunch of things in this video that I normally wouldn't like a bunch of Christmas theme spreads which get excited for because I love Christmas so much. So now going on to the actual theme that I used for December, I ended up going with this snowflake winter wonderland theme. So I've already previously done a snowflake theme, but that was back in 2018 when I had first started bullet journaling, and I think that spread needed some redemption, so I decided to do it again. I also wanted to do this theme because the past couple of years I've done regular green and red Christmas themes for December, so I wanted to do something a little bit different, but also keep it in the winter theme. Also, Amanda Rachel Lee did a theme like this back in 2018, and the cover page, I basically really got inspiration from her, almost identically copied it, but in my own way, and I honestly really like how it turned out. So let's move on to talking about what I actually did on the cover page. For my cover page, I started off doing the simple brush lettering I always do with the title that says December, and then I took a blue Crayola Super Tip and I decided to add a little bit of a drop shadow. You'll see later I go in with a micron and add another drop shadow because I didn't think that the simple blue was enough. I also took a green Crayola Super Tip and that blue Crayola Super Tip and just drew out a bunch of shapes that resembled snowflakes. I, in addition, used a couple of zebra mild liners that were also in a light blue and a light green because I wanted to keep the colors consistent but also just make sure that I emphasize the snowflakes as much as I possibly could. After completing the cover page, I decided to obviously move on to the monthly log. We already know this, but I'll say it again. I decided to do just a regular calendar theme. As you saw, I had to look back to check how many days were in December so I didn't mess up this time. Since I'm doing a classic calendar layout, I just decided to draw in the lines with my micron and I made sure that the boxes were, again, five wide, six long. And I did four days of the week on the left-hand side of the page and three days of the week on the right-hand side of the page. So for the rest of this monthly calendar, I just decided to take the blue super tip that I have and the green super tip that I have and draw in little snowflakes in the top left corner of each box so that way I have a place to put the numbers. I would usually do a circle or some shape and so snowflakes obviously are the theme of this month and I decided to just add a little bit in there for a little pizzazz. And again just taking my micron to write in the numbers of the week and yes I did do this correctly this time and didn't miss a single day. Going into the header I decided to keep it again the same as the cover page and just write December in my typical calligraphy font and I wrote monthly log in this almost typewriter-esque font. I realized this while I was doing it, but the first O when I wrote monthly is the actual O, and then I tried to make it a square when I wrote log. I kept it like that, but I feel like that's gonna bug me the rest of the month, so just ignore it. Act like they're both just O's, regular O's. 
again taking my super tips I decided to outline and add a drop shadow to these different letterings and then now I'm just adding my weekly header and again alternating between the blue and green and then writing in the weekly header with my micron. I know most of you had probably heard this like a million times but how is it already December? Like. I know I started this channel back in June, so I haven't even been doing this for too long, but it feels like it's still March, and I don't understand how we're already here, but you know we've made it, and so I'm proud of all of us, so give yourselves a round of applause, and while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up, because I, I know you like it. You gotta like it. Why are you here? Why are you watching? Keep watching. Also I tried something a little new here, both to benefit myself and to benefit the viewers. I don't know if it actually benefits the viewers, but I decided to slant my journal while I was writing in it to add a different view for once. Let me know if that's cool because I will continue to do it since it does help me when I'm writing. Also, going back in with the mild liner and just drawing a bunch of snowflakes as most of these spreads are. So quickly, I just decided to describe what I'm doing with the snowflakes. Every snowflake is different. Some of them have six lines, some of them have eight, but whatever you choose, it really doesn't matter. It's up to your own creativity. So what I would do is I would start off with the base and I would just add little details until I felt satisfied with it. So some have six, some have eight. It really just depended on how I was feeling. And I feel like this way, yeah, I got to be as creative as I possibly could be. And I also got to have a lot of fun with it because it's different variations. And it, like real life, not every snowflake will ever be the same. They're all going to be different. And that's what I love about it. So as you can see here, I stopped doodling for a second so I can just cut out this corner of the page. Because what I'm doing here is creating a Dutch door, which I will explain more later on. But I just wanted to make sure that my drawings didn't go off the page and I was drawing for no reason. So that's why I decided to cut it out before outlining. Here I'm going in with a Pilot G2 0.38 pen in order to outline. I figured that it doesn't bleed and it's basically as thick as I want it to be. So I might as well use this instead of a Micron because that is what I'm more comfortable with. I prefer a gel pen over a felted pen when it comes to drawing because I have a very hard hand and so it's a lot easier and I feel like I'm not fraying the pen. This is also something that I improved from my last spread because I decided to actually outline the snowflakes. Back when I did my January 2018, I didn't outline any of the snowflakes so there's just random snowflakes everywhere with light colored pens and you can't really see them. So I feel like this outline adds more emphasis and you can clearly see defined snowflakes in each detail with also adding the color in the background. As I normally would do, I still made my goals box and my notes box on the right hand side of this page. I decided to do the goals box in the green and the notes box in the blue super tip. I wrote out each of the titles using the super tip in the same typewriter font and then I went in with my Pilot G2 and just outlined it to make sure that it was defined. Now going in past that, we are going to start working on that little Dutch door that I cut out earlier. What I'm using this Dutch door for is my habit and my mood tracker. This is something that I did in November and I ended up really liking because then I could see my goals and my notes tabs constantly, which meant that I was reminded of my goals and anything that I needed to know. I felt like those spreads were a little bit neglected when it came to my monthly log because as much as I did look at them, I could be looking at them more just to keep a reminder to myself. Here, obviously, I am writing out the days to make sure I don't mess up, which I messed up writing one of the numbers, but I didn't mess up on the actual number of days because I've learned from my many mistakes that I've made in the past. So I did my typical habit, mood, anxiety, and sleep tracker because when it comes to this time of the year, I usually am really busy and just like to see it all in one chart and that's why I stuck with that. Of course, you can do 31 snowflakes and color them in 
if you want to do a more doodly mood tracker but I really really enjoy this one and so I'm just gonna stick with my tried and true again I really enjoyed doing the coloring in mood tracker I would just have to find a way to incorporate sleep and anxiety because I like tracking all three and it was difficult for me to do that in October so it's something that I want to try next year for the titles for these two trackers what I ended up doing was I ended up writing the titles out in the Crayola super tip because I was already adding a drop shadow with the super tip so I figured if I just write it in the Crayola super tip first and went over in the Tombow Fubinosuke hard tip then I would be able to have the drop shadow but have it be more crisp and connected. I also just wanted to quickly shout out my nails. I got them done by my friend Saba who was not my friend at first because we didn't know each other and I found her shop through another friend and she ended up becoming my friend through the few times that I've bought from her and her nail sets are amazing this is not sponsored I'm really just in love with them they currently match my hair so if that gives you any idea to what hair color I have currently and I really just love the quality and she's so precise and detailed with it and I love it so much so I'm gonna link her Instagram down below and also her website where you can purchase her presents. If you are in the Bay Area, she does have appointments that you can schedule through her Instagram, but also she does custom sets and you can DM her on Instagram to find out more about that. Literally, this is not sponsored. I just would love to support a small business and she is one of my favorites. So I definitely think you guys should check her out if you're into this stuff. So I finished up my mood and habit tracker with a little bit of tape and a couple of doodles of some snowflakes just to add details. But now this is what I was talking about when I would go in and add another drop shadow. I didn't do it with a micron, I actually did it with a Pilot G2, but I feel like it adds more character to these letters and just pops it on the page a little bit more. Which of course I always enjoy just adding the tiniest bit of detail that can change the whole entire spread. In fact, there's a lot of times when I finish a spread and later on in the week I'll go in and add more detail because I feel like it's incomplete. This happens every spread actually when I think about it. I just really like to make sure that there's no empty space or negative space that is not being used up because it makes it look like it's a real journal rather than something that I just created which is something that really means a lot to me considering I've been doing this for so long and looking back at old spreads, I didn't understand the use of negative space, so now I do, which I love. Sometimes I like to go through my old journals and see what I've done in the past in order to gain inspiration, which is where the drop shadows originally came from, was one of my old December spreads that I had done about two years ago and I had drop shadows and it looked really good. Again, completely different spread, but just the same concept. And I like doing that because sometimes you forget about what you've done in the past and looking back really helps you realize that there are things that you might know how to do better now than you did before. And so it's really nice to see the improvement between the two. Speaking of a tried and true bullet journal spread that I always do, this is my positives page. I've explained it many times now. Great out of focus work there. Love that. But we all know that I like to write down three positives every day for the month and this is a great spread for during the holiday times because it's almost like a gratitude log. I've previously done gratitude logs and usually my answers in the gratitude logs coincide with my positives page so this year I didn't feel a need to do the gratitude log. Honestly, just writing these three things out every single day brings some joy into my life and especially during the holiday season and final season and all of that things. It just really helps and makes things a little bit more joyful and happy. So I would highly suggest doing this page in your spreads or something similar to this page that will bring you that same amount of joy that I get out of it. It's just a nice thing to always have to look back at and remember the good things that happened that day even if you were having a rough day. So of course I just kept it simple for my positives page and wrote out the numbers with my Crayola super tips and did the title in the same font that I've been doing the entire spreads in. It just keeps it simple and I need both pages to write in all my positives so that is a normal spread that I always do and stays consistent. This next page that I'm doing is my cards to send list. It's actually something that I got inspiration from Amanda Rachel Lee a couple years ago, and I have consistently put it in every single one of my December spreads since then. 
it's pretty simple you just draw out an envelope and leave it open so that a piece of paper that could be coming out of it is essentially the card and on that piece of paper quote unquote you would write down the list of people that you need to give cards to i just did the title and the font that i've been doing this entire spread and also of course adding in the snowflakes to make sure that it still fits the theme this page has proven useful to me many years in a row. I always have a bunch of cards to give along with the gifts that I give. So it's nice to have a page where I have everyone's name just listed off and I can't forget anyone. And for some people, I might just give them a card and no gift. So there's no way that I'm gonna forget anyone with this page. And I also just, again, really like Christmas. So this works out perfectly. Notice that I'm drawing a candy cane on the next page. Basically, this is a page that I did in my 2018 December spreads, and it is a Christmas countdown page. I love the way that this one turned out, and I just wanted to recreate it because it was so fun to draw, and I didn't want to do something with snowflakes since that's the main theme. I wanted to be a little bit different, and I can still fill out the candy cane spots, with the colors that I'm using for this month. So that way it doesn't look too different and doesn't fit the rest of the pages. I drew out two candy canes and separated them into 24 different spaces so that I can color each one in as the days get closer to Christmas, which this is already making me so excited. I again did the title in the font that I have been doing, writing out Christmas with my blue super tip and going over with my Tombow Furunosuke and writing out countdown in my green super tip and going over it with my pilot G2. I really just, the aesthetic of this page is always so nice and it's just a little fun way to bring in more Christmas joy into your life and counting down the days until Christmas. Writing the word Christmas is honestly a joy itself for me, but this page, I decided to still add a little bit of joy by putting in some of my favorite washi tapes, which I actually do have the exact washi tapes linked below because I found them online. I've had one pack for such a long time. It was actually one of my first sets, which is the green and silver stripe set and the regular silver. They came together and it is one of my favorite washi tape sets and I use it all the time. So I finally found it and I will link it below. And the other set is just a regular colored set that has a bunch of different colors in it that I got on Amazon recently. And I actually really like the way that that turned out together. So this next spread is by far my most used Christmas spread throughout the entire years I've been bullet journaling. Again, got this from Amanda Rachel Lee a couple years back, so credits to her. But it's basically a gift giving guide. I usually have it separated in many different columns and in fact I should pull it up in front of me right now as I'm doing the voiceover so I don't get this wrong. But what I do is I separate the entire two page spread by seven different columns and the first one is name, the second one is gift ideas, the third one is budget, then it's spent, needed by, bought, wrapped, given, and notes. That's actually nine, not seven. And what I do is I'll write down the name of the person I'm giving the gift to, any gift ideas or whatever the gift actually is, the budget that I have for them, how much I spent for them, when do I need the gift by, and then on the right hand side, if I've bought it, if I've wrapped it, and if I've given it. And I check them off and it makes my life so much easier because it's not easy to remember all the people and when you need it by and if you've given it and this way I can just remember all of that on one simple page and I love this page for that. And we've made it to my final two spreads of my December 2020 plan with me, which we all know what they are, but let's repeat it again. It's my brain dump and my school tracker. On the left hand side, I just created a box and wrote out the title in the typewriter font. I need this box for a lot of different thoughts and so I don't really fill it out too much. I will probably add snowflakes when I get bored, but for now just some simple washi tape and that was it. Lastly on the right hand side we have my school tracker which I do every month, but basically I messed up and I accidentally divided the columns into two instead of three. 
I did have week 9, week 10, and week 11, well, finals week left, and I realized that when I was writing in week 9. So I take that Dutch door that I had earlier, and I just cut out a piece so I could tape over that line and divide it into the correct amount of spaces that I needed to, just to make sure that I had enough room to write down everything that I need to do these final weeks of my fall quarter, which is still insane to me. So all I did at the end was write in the weeks on top, and later on I believe I go in and write in my classes on the left, which I didn't do on camera. But that is all for my December 2020 plan with me. Again, I just want to thank everyone who supported me this far. Here is my final December 2020 flip through. I'm wishing everyone happy holidays and, you know, hopefully a happy new year. You'll see me before the new year again, but I'm just going to say it now. I hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure you like and subscribe. But for now, peace out, y'all. Thank you.